गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल आई एम डॉक्टर नितेश सोनी आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन जनरल सर्जरी डिपार्टमेंट इन महात्मा गांधी मेडिकल कॉलेज सो टूडेज आई एम गोइंग टू टीच एम्पुटेशन प्रिंसिपल एंड इट्स मैनेजमेंट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल लर्न अबाउट वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ एम्पुटेशन एंड वॉट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ डिसआर्टिकुलेशन डिसआर्टिकुलेशन इज द रिमूवल ऑफ सर्जिकल रिमूवल ऑफ वोल ऑफ द लिम्ब और पार्ट ऑफ द लिम्ब थ्रो ए जॉइंट बट वेयर इज एम्पुटेशन इज सर्जिकल रिमूवल ऑफ लिम्ब और पार्ट ऑफ द लिम्ब थ्रो ए बोन और मल्टीपल बोन्स सो एज ए सर्जिकल मेजर्स इट इज यूज टू कंट्रोल पेन और ए डिजीज प्रोसेस इन द अफेक्टेड लिम्ब सच एज मेलेग्नेंसी और गैंग्रीन सो वॉट इज द हिस्ट्री ऑफ एम्पुटेशन सो एम्पुटेशन इज मोस्ट एंसियंट प्रोसीजर इन सर्जरी सो इट इज यूज इन इन एंसियंट टाइम सो हिस्टोरिकली इट इज रिलेटेड बाय द आफ्टर मैथ ऑफ वॉर इट वॉज ए क्रूड प्रोसीजर लिम वॉज रेपिडली सर्व फ्रॉम एनेस्थेटाइज पेशेंट द ओपन स्टम्प वॉज दैन कर्ज और डिप्ड इन बॉइलिंग ऑयल टू ऑप्टेन हिमोस्टेसिस हिपोक्रेट वॉज द फर्स्ट टू यूज लिगेचर एम्ब्रूज पेरे ए फ्रांसिस मिलिट्री सर्जन इट इज इंट्रोड आर्ट्री फोर्स ही ऑल्सो डिजाइन प्रोस्टोसिस so what is the aims of uh, the amputation first aim is return patient to maximum level of independent functions ablation of diseased tissue tumor or infection reduce morbidity or mortality caused by tumor or infection considered first part of a reconstruction to produce a physiological and organ indications of the amputation uh, congenital trauma infection peripheral vascular disease or gangrene tumor burn and frostbites so what is the first of all congenital indications of the amputations agar lower limb if involvement is more than 3 less than 1 3% of the all amputations or upper limb mein 9% 9% is involved supranumerary digits failure of partial or complete formation of portion of the limb radial or tibial deficiencies are referred to as preaxial then ulnar and fibular deficiencies are referred to postaxial second is trauma trauma is the leading indication of amputation in younger patients more common in men because of vocation vocational and avocational hazards the only absolute indication of primary amputation is an irreparable vascular injury in the ischemic limb third is infection first gas gangrene caused by clostridium myon necrosis within 24 hours bronze discoloration is there cirro sanguinous exuded and musty odor second is anaerobic cellulitis causative organisms include clostridia anaerobic streptococci bacteroids and gram negative rods then streptococcal myon necrosis 3 to 4 days mein it uh, diabetic cellulitis chronic infections like madura foot and severe sepsis tumor osteosarcoma fibrosarcoma chondrosarcoma melanomas margarine ulcers types non end bearing sites what are the types of amputations non end bearing site uh, bearing weight taken by joints second is end bearing cone bearing weight taken by the body closed or flap type and th- fourth is open and gluten type so first is what is closed and flap type most commonly carried out nowadays differently type of flap are used are circular elliptical or oval racket shaped semi circular or rectangular open or gluten type done only in emergency situations like trauma electric burn service severe sepsis all the structures of the limb are divided at the same level the wound including bone is left open later it require a revision formal amputation so simply chop off the limb is open or gluten type so what is the ideal stump so some criteria which uh, included in ideal stumps first is op- uh, so some should be of optimum length like if below knee hai it is 7.5 cm maximum to 12.5 cm from tibial to basity above knee hai it is 25 cm for greater trochanter enter above elbow it is 20 cm from acromion process below elbow is 17 cm from allocron it is the optimum length so length should be 17 cm 
below elbow from olecranon so second point is should healed by primary intention third is end should be smoothly rounded should be firm should be non tender and conical should be advocate joint movement is there so should not have rigid and uh, soft tissue the skin should be not uh, inflated should not have a projecting bone spur should have adequate blood supply should have a thin scar which doesn't interfere with the prosthetic function the scar should be placed where it is not exposed to the pressure the scar should be fairly mobile over underlying tissue so doppler ultrasonography measure arterial pressure in approximately 15% of patient with pvd the resulting falsely elevated because of the non compressibility of the calcified extremities doppler ultrasound has been used in past predict wound healing a minimum measurement of 70 mm hg is believed to be necessary for wound healing ischemic index this is index in the ratio of doppler ultrasonography pressure at the level of being tested at the back brachial systolic pressure and uh, second degree of uh, 0.5 or greater at the surgical level is necessary to support wound healing ankle brachial plexus uh ankle brachial plexus at the ankle level is believed to be the best indicator of the assessing advocate inflow the ischemic limb and index less than 0.45 indicates incision distal to the ankle will not heal ct angiography to determine level of blockage and the status of the collateral ct scan to rule out the cva 2d echo for cardiac assessment thermography or laser doppler flowmetry as the method to test skin flap perfusion tissue uptake to intravenously injected fluorescein or the tissue clearance of interdermal le injected genon 133 transcutaneous oxygen measurements plan for prosthesis and rehabilitation by physiotherapist and rehabilitation team so this is the plan what should we do before doing any amputation so determination of amputation level this is very important determining the appropriate level of the amputation requires an understanding of the trade off between increased function within with a move distal level or amputation on the dis disease decreased complication rate with a more proximal level of amputation if a patient has no ambulatory potential wound healing with decreased pre operative morbidity should not be the chief concern the energy required for walking is inversely proportionate to the length of the remaining limb so determining the most distal part of amputation with a reasonable chance of healing can be challenged pre operatively clinically skin color hair growth and skin temperature should be seen investigations thermography or laser doppler flowmetry as methods to test skin flap perfusion tissue uptake of intravenously injected fluorescein of the tissue clearance of interdermally injected genon 133 scar should not be adherent to the underlying bone or adherent scar mark a prosthetic fitting extremely difficult and this type of scar often break down after prolonged prosthetic use Redundant soft tissue or large dog's ears create problem in prosthetic fitting and may prevent maximal function of an otherwise well constructed stump. So, what is myodesis? Myodesis muscle continue to contribulence their antagonists, preventing contracture and maximize residual limb. Myodesis may be con contraindicated, however, in severe ischemia because of the increased risk or wound breakdown. Hemostasis, except in severely ischemic limbs, the use of tourniquet is highly desirable and make the amputation easier. Major blood vessels should be isolated and individually ligated. The larger arteries and veins are dissected and separately ligated. This prevents the development of intravenous fistulas and aneurysm. Larger vessels should be doubly ligated. The tourniquet should be deflated before closure, and the meticulous hemostasis should be obtained. A drain should be used in mo most cases for 48 to 72 hours. Fin then now, a neuroma always forms after a nerve has been divided. A neuroma becomes painful if it forms in a position where it would be subjected to the repeated trauma. Now should be isolated, gently pulled distally into the wounds and divided cleanly with a sharp knife so that the cut end retracts well proximally to the level of the bone dis dissection. A strong tension of the nerve should be avoided during the maneuver; otherwise, the amputation stump may be painful even after the wound has healed. Large nerves such as sciatic nerve often continuously relatively large arteries and should be ligated separately. 
bones excessive periosteal stripping is contraindicated and may result in the formation of the ring sequestra or bony overgrowth bony prominence that would not be well padded by soft tissue always should be resected and the remaining bone should be rasped to form a smooth counter so that uh, patient won't feel any pain so standard surgical principle of amputation in the child preserve the physis amputations through the metaphysis such as above the knee or distal form forearm level or diaspasis diaphysis are not recommended in the children because of the progressive relative shortening of the residual limb this is the most critical in the femur but it applicable in to the other long long bones as well disarticulated when possible preserve stump shape and pediatric amputation stump becomes conical with growth so preservation of the bony architecture should such as the short segment of the proximal fibula or the distal condyle of the femurs femurs will assist in the subsequent rotational control of the processes so lower limb amputation it is very important topic so it is done in various level like if toe amputation or disarticulation then further we uh, decide it is metatarsal phalangeal disarticulation then trans metatarsal artic disart uh, amputation less friends are uh, disarticulation choparts and sims so first of all it is ray amputation amputation of the toe of the head of the metatarsal then gillies amputation amputation then proximal to the neck of metatarsal distal to the base then lisfung amputation amputation of the foot between the metatarsal and tarsals metatarsal and tarsals then chopard amputation amputation of the foot by a mid tarsal disarticulation then since amputation it is removal of foot by calcaneum and cutting of the tibia and fibula just above the ankle joint with remaining healing flap amputation provides an end bearing stump that in many circumstances allow ambulation without a prosthesis over short distance it is excellent amputation for children in whom the preserves the physis of the distal end of the tibia and fibula then void amputations the void procedure provides a broad weight bearing surface of the heel by creating an arthrosis between the distal tibia and the tuber of the calcaneum the compared to the sims amputation it is provides more length and better preserves the weight bearing function of the heel pad then below am, uh, knee amputation also known as budgers amputation long posterior flap used of the scar with the scar placed in the anterior surface fibula is divided first 2 cm above the line of the tibial resection stump length should be 14 to 17 cm for the knee joint length of the flap 1 and 1/2 times diameter of the limb sharp end of tibia should be bevelled anteriorly process placement is better in below knee greed stroke amputation amputation of the length through the knee using the oval anterior flap femur divided just above the articular surface and patella anchored in the divided femur uh, then uh, uh, further we will read about the uh, above knees amputation and further more amputations so thanks a lot for the class